This video is for those of you who are planning on going to the Philippines for the first time to either explore the country or to be with your Filipina girlfriend. I'll give you many key tips to avoid common pitfalls that many first-time international travellers may find that can make for a frustrating time and even spoil their vacation. As most of us will know, the IATF has given the approval to reopen to foreign tourists from green list countries in principle who are fully vaccinated pending final approval of conditions of entry. With five weeks still till Christmas, I'm almost thinking we could get a firm date by early December. I know many will disagree with me here and perhaps I'm a little optimistic, but we'll soon find out. Either way, the reopening of the Philippines for foreign tourists is imminent and as close as it's been since the pandemic has kept us away from the country. I know many guys out there have been waiting patiently to go to the Philippines to be with their girlfriend again or perhaps for the first time. And I've been speaking with several men who have been apart from their wives for 18 months or longer. One can only imagine how hard this must be for all those couples. But your patience will soon be rewarded, where you can start planning and living your lives as a couple. I've been talking to several people in recent weeks who've never been to the Philippines before, and some have never been out of their own country. They of course are a little nervous flying to meet their Filipina for the first time, but even more nervous about making sure they get everything right with their preparations so they don't have any issues. Now, of course, we need to prepare in much the same way as we did before COVID hit. But make sure we also understand what the requirements are to enter the Philippines, which can change at any time. So be sure to keep up to date. What I'm going to do in this video is go through many important things that you need to be aware of prior to going to the Philippines when they reopen. From vaccinations, to passports, currency, essential items plane tickets, travel insurance, and much, much more. So if you want to relieve your concerns or worries in preparation to travel to the Philippines, then be sure to buckle up and stay with me here. Now for me, I like to plan my trip to the Philippines at least six months in advance, but I understand some of you may be super keen to get to the Philippines as soon as they announce the reopening to us foreign travelers. The reason I like to plan well in advance is to get the best possible prices on my flights and accommodation as I can. And I find by booking in advance of three to six months often gets me some of the best deals. But I'll also tell you that you can sometimes get very good prices only a week or so before flying out. This is because sometimes airlines may have seats that they want to fill on next week's flights. And so they have a clearance sale so to speak. But what you must be aware of in this uncertain climate is that sometimes the cheapest airline tickets are not always the best. You need to be able to have the flexibility to change your flight if needed, just in case you get sick or even test positive to COVID as you prepare to leave. If that happens, you'll most likely need to quarantine for a period of time which will delay your departure. So being able to change your flights for a small fee or even no fee is advisable. And while I think of it, it's important to note right here that your passport will need to have at least six months prior to its expiration date, or you won't get through customs. Now, what you need to be aware of is, apart from being fully vaccinated for coronavirus, you may possibly need other vaccinations as well, which you'll need to have that conversation with your doctor. But getting the series of three vaccinations over an eight-week period for hepatitis B is well advised, as you don't want to go to the Philippines and come back with Hep B, which is reasonably common and highly contagious. Your doctor may also recommend one or two other vaccinations, depending on what areas in the Philippines you may be looking to visit. A good tip here is also to ask a doctor about something to relieve stomach problems should you accidentally drink the local water or eat some food that doesn't agree with you. And yes guys, be sure to play it safe here and only drink bottled water from supermarkets or 7-Eleven stores. And remember guys, whilst chatting to your GP, if you have any medications that you'll take with you, 
then ask about a letter so you can show customs if required. And I'll say again that I can't stress enough that you need to fully understand all the requirements around COVID travel in the Philippines and whilst on the plane or in the terminals. It's impossible for me to say right now what they are because they haven't been determined at this time of me recording this video. So that's something to make sure you understand so you get no surprises. Sometimes people may worry about booking a hotel before they travel. And I always do this myself after I have my flights. And I do this so I'm more relaxed when I arrive. But I'll tell you, there are many motels, hotels and resorts in the Philippines that you'll always be able to get accommodation, especially if you're in the larger cities. This goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. One needs to research across all areas if you want to make it an enjoyable experience with little frustration or worry. So yes, research flights and accommodation for sure, so you're not paying much more than the person sitting next to you. But also research the city or province areas that you'll visit whilst there. This allows you to understand more about these places, but also what the climate is like so you can pack accordingly. Now you may say it's a tropical country and it's hot and humid all of the time, and for the most part you may be correct. But also, I'll tell you if you're venturing into some mountainous regions, such as Baguio, at a certain time of the year, it can get rather cold especially at night when you may need a jacket. So understanding where you're going and what the climate is like there will help you to pack accordingly. Other things to consider when packing are things like a travel adapter to charge up your phone or to run your laptop. The electricity wall sockets in the Philippines may be different to what they are in Europe or Australia, for example. Now, you could possibly find a travel adapter when in the Philippines, but why waste your time searching when you don't have to? Be aware, especially if you're venturing into province areas, that they may not use toilet paper there. This can come as a shock to many foreign guys, but it doesn't need to be a problem if you're prepared. So talk to your girlfriend in advance what the situation is around toilet paper. If she's a province girl, then most likely you'll have to take your own supply or even get a supply from the supermarket in the Philippines. The problem can be that toilet paper can be rather bulky. So what many foreign guys choose to do is buy the baby wipes and then pack them in their suitcase, which takes up very little room. And be sure to take two or three black or blue pens on the plane with you, where you have easy access to them, as you'll need to complete an arrival declaration, which they give you before the plane lands, and by doing this, it's just one less thing that you have to worry about after landing. Now, many people may choose to take a suitcase which will go under the plane, and they may also take carry-on luggage, which is a much smaller bag that people may have a change of clothes or a few other items they may need on the trip. But some will only take a backpack because they purposely want to travel light, which makes it easier to navigate the airport and they don't have to wait for their luggage at the baggage carousel. The downside to this is that they'll constantly be having to wash their clothes, which may not be a problem if they have someone who will do this for them. Now, while I think of it, just be sure to always have your passport, visa, and any other necessary documents always handy, so you're not scratching around looking for them when asked. Another thing that's really important is comprehensive travel insurance that includes coverage for COVID-19. Now, there are plenty of good agents that provide comprehensive travel insurance at a reasonable price. But it's again a matter for you to do your research and compare what's out there. Another tip I'll mention is around having Philippines currency in your pocket when you land. What I usually do is go to my bank or agent online and organise around 9,000 pesos or so before I fly out. But plan this in advance because you must order it, and it can take a couple of weeks. So I always do this around two months or so before flying out. I find this way I don't have to try and find a currency exchange shop at the airport, although they are there. It's just one less thing I need to worry about when I arrive. Now whilst we're talking about money, 
It's also a good idea to purchase a money belt before flying. Leave your wallet at home and just use your money belt with straps around your waist and keeps money and documents like a passport inside. You must understand that as a foreigner in the Philippines, you could become a target for someone to pickpocket you. So best to play it safe and stick with a money belt. And another big tip right here is to make sure that you have more than one way to access your money from the Philippines, just in case you lose your ATM card or something else happens. Look at your various options such as a debit or credit card, as well as a travel card with a preloaded amount, and also I find it handy to have a Western Union account so I can transfer money to myself as required. You'll find Western Union offices are all over the Philippines and you'll never be too far away from one. When you arrive at the airport, you'll be looking to get a taxi to take you to your motel, unless your girlfriend is picking you up. I'm sure we've all heard of the many taxi scams going on in Manila over the years, and so we all need to be a little careful. I won't go into every taxi scam there is, but you can see some here on the card above. But just be sure to get a taxi where the meter is running and not where they try and make you agree to an inflated price. Let's face it, you're new to the Philippines and you stand out. To some taxi drivers in Manila, they'll know that you have no idea of the cost of taxi rides, so they'll try and charge you triple the normal cost. Before you get into the cab, always insist that the meter is on, and if they say no then find another cab driver who will do so. And yes, never put your luggage in the boot of a taxi until you know the meter will be on. Otherwise, they may just drive off with your bags in their boot. Now, whilst I may not have covered every little detail here, I do believe I've given some very important information and tips for you guys going to the Philippines for the first time that will certainly take some stress and worry out of the trip for you. Just be prepared and tick off all the boxes one at a time and you'll get there. One last tip I'll give you is to make sure that you, as an inexperienced international traveller, make sure you have plenty of time between your flights. I know what it's like to be landing to change flights and only having an hour or so to make my next flight. It can be stressful. So be sure you have at least a couple of hours between connecting flights and you'll be fine. And finally, let's always be sure to be respectful of the people, their customs and country, and you'll find they'll respond to you in a very positive way that will make your trip very enjoyable. If you're looking for more valuable information and tips around travel to the Philippines, then be sure to check out my playlist on screen now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.